Dallas, Texas remains one of the more unique places in American history. And I can tell you from personal experience that to this day, there is a large part of the population of varying ages that still feels the sting from November of 1963 when the president of the United States was gunned down on their streets. To them, it is a stain on their city and their state, one that can never and in some cases should never be merely washed away in the hopes that such violence would never come to their home ever again. But here we are, more than 50 years later, and the streets of Dallas have once again run red with blood, only a few blocks from where JFK was assassinated. And most of the victims from this attack were also treated at Parkland Hospital, the same facility where the president expired those many years ago. It's a moment of shame for Dallas and for America. And today, people there are asking, why here? Why Dallas? And will this city once again be an epicenter for an Americans and America changed forever? by violence. We ask this and much more. Let's welcome back the Defender of Liberty. Late afternoon drive news talker at KLIF 570 in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. Grant Stinchfield is back on the hard line. Your phone calls and comments momentarily at 1-877-NEWSMAX. Grant, it's good to talk to you again. Sorry it's under these circumstances, but seeing as you're there, you're talking to the folks, what has been the reaction to now? The Dallas Police Chief David Brown, the way he has talked about this and the handling of these killings in Dallas? Well, I'll tell you what, Dallas always amazes me. I mean, this is a tremendously strong city and Chief David Brown could not have done a better job. I don't think there's a person in this city that has any criticism for Chief David Brown, the way he handled this. And, and he spoke for all of us. I mean, this really is a city that has a terrific relationship with the police department. I mean, they've worked on community policing. And Ed, I'll tell you, I've worked all over the country. Dallas Police is one of the finest police departments in the nation. We've never had a problem with rioting. There's never really been craziness between police and communities. Sure, there's been their problems like any other big city, but never to the extent like we've seen in places like Detroit and Cleveland and Baltimore uh, and, and places like that. So for this to happen here, a city where the community gets along so well with the police department was really a slap in the face for us. We're still trying to figure out how to go forward from here because this was a huge loss for this city. Uh, and I can tell you from, from my listeners and me and just about everyone I've talked to, uh, we love the Dallas Police Department and our hearts are with them. Let's talk about a controversy, though. There are 45 states in America that allow open carry for firearms. Texas is one of those, and the people of Texas are very proud of it, as a matter of fact. But here we now have the police themselves are saying that it gave us pause because we weren't sure exactly who the bad guys were, who the good guys are. Matter of fact, here is the Dallas mayor, Mike Rawlings. He said the following. This is the first time, but a concrete time, that I think a law can hurt citizens, police, and not protect them. I think it's amazing when you think that there is a gunfight going on, and you are supposed to be able to sort out who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Grant, every time this comes up, we are told by proponents that this will stop this sort of crime. If you have an armed citizenry, they will be able to stop people doing something like this. But it didn't work this time, Grant. Shouldn't this make us step back a little bit? a little bit rather from that law and think maybe it's not what we think it is well and let, let's put this in perspective one mike rawlings is a, is a great guy he comes on this show all the time he is a democrat and he's one of the few democrats that i actually can have a positive discussion with uh, but i i think when you look at what happened here the three individuals that were open carry here turned their guns over to police right away uh, yes, it added to confusion. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it didn't add to confusion, but it was only for moments. I don't think it cost anybody their lives. And this was one instance. We haven't had a situation like this in, in years and years, if ever something happening like this. But and granted, so though, Grant, this is what this. was supposed to happen. I mean, and I'm, you know, you and I have great arguments and I love them because we, we hit them on all sides here. But this is what we were told. If a situation like this happened where somebody wanted to take out a gun and start shooting, that if people are open carrying, then somebody in the population might be able to stop this or would have the ability to stop this. Yet it didn't happen. Correct. And think about the situation, though. The police couldn't stop it. This okay. crazed maniac, Micah Johnson, took positions on the sixth floor of a garage, and then he moved to another garage. The police couldn't even take him out. So this was not a situation where you had people with guns that were going to take him out. And I believe the three people carrying guns had them unloaded. I don't know what an unloaded weapon does for you. I believe they were idiots in a situation like this that could have turned into a powder keg. Uh, forget about the shooting afterwards where there's so much tension at protests like this. Why they would bring guns to something like that. 
I have no idea. Did it add to confusion? You bet. Well, we but should also point out, and I just have to interrupt, we should point out that the Dallas Morning News reports there were 20 people open carrying at that time, more than three. I think that's what gives the cops a little pause. Well, I, I, don't, I don't blame the cops for having pause at this at all. I can certainly see how it adds to confusion, but this is one event uh, that, that I've never seen in my situation happening before. Uh, the police couldn't even get him from where this guy was taking up in his positions, and, and the way the police responded was nothing short of heroic. As they're running towards the gunfire, they get those other people under control. They figure out who's supposed to have the guns and, and who's not. They're, they're guarding the people, Ed, who hate them. These were protesters who despise the police with this false Black Lives Matter narrative, and the police didn't care. They were going to do their jobs, protect those people, and get that gunman under control. And I do want to point that out because there was a woman that I heard interviewed, and she was there, and she was in tears when she talked about how the cops wrapped themselves around her and her child and were trying to protect them. These are still dedicated officers who are trying to do their job. You are exactly correct. I only got about a minute left. I want to ask you something else here, and that is a new ABC News Washington Post poll. A majority of Americans say they disapprove of the FBI FBI's recommendation not to charge Hillary Clinton with a crime over her handling of the email while Secretary of State. 56% of Americans disapprove of the decision, yet many of them, Grant, say that they will still trust Hillary Clinton and they will still vote for her. 60 seconds, what does that say to you about what we're facing right now in this election? Well, it, it boggles the mind, Ed. I mean, here you had the FBI director lay out a case to prosecute her. He talked about reasonable prosecutors. I've spoke to many reasonable prosecutors who all said they would have brought this case at the very least to a grand jury. But I'll tell you this, Ed, as a very strong conservative, I'm actually glad they didn't charge her here because what would that have meant? Hillary Clinton out of the race and then we run against Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. There's no way Donald Trump beats a Biden and Warren. And so here we have uh, we have a great argument against Hillary Clinton that she lied over and over again. In fact, we put a commercial up on, on KLIF.com that I wrote for our show about the lies with the FBI and Hillary's lies. I mean, this is what Donald Trump can hammer away at for the, for the next uh, all the way up until November. So I think maybe we should look at this as a gift. And it's what he should be hammering away at, which is what a lot of conservatives want him to do. And stop talking about this useless information out there that does not help defeat Hillary Clinton. That is exactly true. Grant, I'm glad everything's working out in Dallas. I love the people there. I've been there many times. I can only hope that this does not put a permanent stain on that city. Weekday afternoons, 5 to 8 p.m. Central Time on 570 KLIF in Dallas, Fort Worth. Make sure you catch the Defender of Liberty. Grant Stinchfield. Always a pleasure, Grant. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Ed. All right, now I promise we'd get to your phone calls here. 1 877 Newsmax. 1 877 Newsmax. We've got a couple of minutes. Let's get them in here. Make your point, please, quickly. Arnold is in Smithfield, Pennsylvania. Arnold, thanks for joining us. You believe we need better guidelines for people being arrested and for police arresting the people. What could be better? What would you suggest? Yes, uh, all, all of these bad outcomes making the news. They evolve from different circumstances. And a lot of these answers are trying to blanket all of them, and I think you have to categorize them. We need concrete solutions, and we have to accept certain realities when we do that. I think, like, and I'm going to address, like, police when they pull a car over. Be brief. Give me about 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, racial differences and, and location, you know, it's going to, physical parents may make, may, may precipitate fear, but it's a matter of procedure. The state's license of drivers, you learn all these things you can be pulled over for, but when you're pulled over, they don't have any instruction as to precisely what you must do. Like, maybe it should be taught, it should be tested, both hands on the upper steering wheel. Well, I believe they do teach people, Arnold, with all fairness, with all fairness, though, I believe there are a lot of different DMVs and a lot of different individuals that will teach you that. You are right, though, because whether you're white, black, blue, green, male, female, it makes no difference. You put your hands on the wheel. You are told that, and I've heard that from many cops. Whether that's getting through to the individuals themselves, I think, is a very good point. Thanks so much for your call. Francesca is in Newington, Connecticut. Now, you believe, Francesca, the president needs to step up and unite the country right now. 30 seconds. Tell me how he does. Does that? 
he does that, first of all, by being honest and truthful. And he, te- he says to the cops that uh, they, they expect the cops to do all the diffusing of the situations uh, which they encounter. However, the president himself is not diffusing the situation. The Justice Department is not diffusing the situation. How could they expect the cops to do it all? We need good leadership. We need good-minded people in the Justice Department. We need uh, jobs for these uh, poor communities, for their adolescents. We need good moral teachings in school. I feel I live in a house of mirrors and confusion. Would you not agree with me, though, and I'm out of time, but would you not agree with me that everything you've said right there are things that we've been saying for decades that need to be done and are not getting done? They're not getting done, and so what's wrong with our leadership? We need people that can stand up and do the job. It still comes down. We haven't had it. What you have just said is the thing that I always harp on. You nailed it. It's the leadership capacity of the people that we have in charge right now, and we have not been getting it now for decades. I can take this back to the 60s. We're reliving the same problems we had then. Stick around. John Gizzy is going to join us live in Cleveland. More of your phone calls right here on the Hardline.